Welcome back, everyone. I'm Christopher Brandon with the Coeur d'Alene Public Library and the Cooperative Information Network. And I'm George Williams. I'm the Next Search Catalog Coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System in Lawrence, Kansas. And this is part two of our uh, videos, our training videos on our um, batch. Uh, oh, I can never get this right. <laughs> batch uh, permissions uh, modifier plugin for uh, Koha. Um, we're focusing on a plugin that uh, we learned about at a conference. And uh, this week, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more advanced features with this plugin and some possible pitfalls that you need to be watching out for. Before we get into that, we're hosted by Koha US. Uh, you'll find our website at koha-us.org. You'll find great resources under uh, the Learn tab, including our video playlist, which uh, includes our videos for uh, the terrific Every Other Thursday training videos, as well as some other videos that we've uh, curated for the website. Uh, you'll also find our, our videos on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash koha-us. Uh, you'll find all the videos that we've recorded from various uh, uh, special interest groups, our uh, meetings, our conferences, but also our playlist for the terrific Every Other Thursday training videos. And uh, be sure to subscribe to the, the playlist. You'll be notified anytime we have new videos posted. Uh, you can also comment on our videos and like the videos that you've liked. Um, we'd like to hear back from you, so please make sure that you're you're commenting so that we know what kind of things you're interested in and what you would like to see. We always welcome your comments. And with that said, George, take it away. All right, so last time, uh, I feel like we should have a part of this that's like uh, on the previous episode of. So on our previous episode, we discussed the batch, the batch patron permission modifier. Um, and, you know, before I go on and do anything else, let me say um, that this plugin, um, the repository for it is uh, on GitHub, and it was written by Kyle Hall at Bywater Solutions. And so um, uh, this is a great plugin. It's got some some real great advantages to it. There's a lot of good things that can be done with it. Um, and I just, wanna, time, I just wanna say, Kyle, well done. I appreciate all yeah. the hard work that you put into Koha. You have put in so much uh, extraordinary time on Koha and made it so much more than it is. So thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, I agree. Kyle does a great job. And you know, Bywater, like many of the other uh, companies that support Koha, they have uh, sites on GitHub and GitLab where they um, have repositories of their plugins. So if you go to the Biowater Solutions uh, uh, GitHub repository, there's a ton of great stuff there. And like almost everybody else in the Koha community, all of their stuff is available. Um, it's all, uh, you know, licensed to be used by anybody. Um, so that's, of course, one of the things that is the most important, you know, about, about Koha is it's free and open for anybody that wants to use it. Hey, I see two contributors on this, this plug. Yes, we'll talk about that. I added a patch, um, which um, helps solve one of the problems that we were talking about. Um, long story short, for those of you that... Um, that watch this these videos, we recorded an entire video about this plugin, and we just threw it out because we realized that there were so many things that um, we needed to find out more about that the that we just needed to start over again. Yeah, I think we were uh, you know just kind of blown away by what we could do with it. But then we started asking questions and yeah. you know, questions, questions are good. Questions are important. And, you know, this is a this is a fairly new plugin, but there are some things that can go wrong if you don't 
deal with it correctly. So, you know, we want to point out what you can do with it. And if you use it appropriately, it can work well. But we want to make everybody aware of the things that can go wrong. Uh, so, you know, please watch this all the way through. Don't just, you know, get excited about it and go implement it without watching all of this. Yeah. Um, and that was what we were kind of doing last time, the first time we did a video for this, which is about uh, three weeks ago. Uh, and then when it was all said and done, I, we just said, let's throw it all away and start over. So if you, if you did watch last week's video, that part seems to be perfect, seamless, I, you know, as far as just going in and creating a template and applying those permissions to everybody in a list, that works perfectly. And I don't see any problems there. Um, the one thing you've got to note is that if you um, apply a template to a patron that already has permissions, it's going to, if that patron had more permissions than the template you're applying to them, they're going to lose some permissions. That's the only pitfall there. Yeah. Um, there are some additional pitfalls if you go on to uh, the, the patron template mapping. That's where you can run into a bunch of other issues. I'm going to go to tools and I'm going to go to the patron, batch patron permission modifier. Now, this is a different approach to getting to this plugin last time you approached yeah. it through the admin yeah um you can go to koha admin or koha tools and in this case i want to go to tool plugins and i'm going to go to the configure page on the actions back up for just a second yeah um, and this is something i remember from the last time we tried to record this um where this shows up on the tools page isn't uh, particularly um, uh, intuitive because you think pat you know patron modifications you're going to go over to the left side of the screen, but yeah. this is under the additional tools under tools plugin, so it's kind of buried in there. Yeah, you kind of would expect the patron permission modifier to be under patrons and circulation, but in in the tools page all of the uh, Koha plugins will show up under plugins. And so here I'm gonna click on plugins and you'll only see um, from the tools menu, you will only see the tools plugins. Um, the plugins have classes. And if you wanna see all the plugins from here, you have to click on uh, show all. But uh, let's get back to the batch patron permission modifier. There are just too many, um, too many um, B, B and P sounds in there to make it easy <laughs> to say. Um, but instead of running the tool, um, I'm going to go to configure. And last time we added these three templates um, to the top box. And that sets up, you know, what are your, um, what are your patron templates? This next box down here is template permission mappings. And so I'm gonna take these three templates and I'm gonna put them down here. And after each uh, template, I'm going to put a colon and a number. And the number I'm putting in here is a list number. So template 1742, I'm mapping to modify patron list number eight. So let's stop right there and talk about patron lists again. If I, I go get to get list, list numbers and- Yeah. Yeah. So I got the, um, the patron, the borrower number that comes from the template. So if I go to template, template director, um, there's my borrower number right there is 1742. Okay. And I can also find that up here in the URL. And if you go to the details page, you also find it over here. So the borrower number tells you it's the unique ID for a borrower. It's not the barcode number because barcode numbers can change. The borrower number never changes. 
once that's set in the database, that number never changes. You can change everything else about a borrower, but you can never change their borrower number. The list uh, numbers come from the lists. So this list that I created um, that I called permissions director, and I put two borrowers on there. Um, the list ID is up here in the URL, and this is list number eight. And I've got two borrowers on that list. You have to hunt a little bit more for the list number than you would for the borrower number. Yeah, and my next, one um, uh, template number 1714 is my library assistant template, and that list is list number five. And um, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that you're using the right list. Yes. With the right. Uh, <laughs> that is one of the potential pitfalls of doing yes. this. Um, and number 1713, that is. Uh, my template for circulation and the list number that goes with that is list number six. Wouldn't it be awesome and a little bit more straightforward if you could map using drop downs, pick this from the the uh, the templates and pick this from the uh, the lists, map them that way. That's a really good idea. Um, <laughs> and I think the best way to deal with that, we can talk a little bit about GitHub here. Um, the best way to make a suggestion like that would be to go to GitHub and on issues, we could create a new issue that says, that asks for a feature where you just essentially, essentially you're sending Kyle an email that says, uh, hey, this would be a great feature. Uh, I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. Though. Right. That's all anybody wants to see and watch is me typing for, <laughs> point that's trying to come up with the right words to describe that. So I've got these three three templates. I've got three uh, template permission mappings. Borrower number 1742 to list eight, 1714 to list five, and 1713 to list number six. So I'm gonna click save. So now if I go back to my patrons, and find my patron lists. Director is list number eight. So uh, list number eight, both of these borrowers should now be mapped to that director permission. And it actually says right here, this patron's permissions are controlled by the permissions template director. And if we go in and we update the uh, director template, like let's say we add edit authorities to the director permissions, once we save this, everybody on this list will have, when you modify the template, once they're mapped, everybody that's part of that list that is mapped to a template will automatically be updated. So you don't have to run that tool again and, uh, and, uh, and process everything manually again. Once they're mapped, you should be able to update the template, and then everybody in that list will automatically be updated. Wow, that that's is slick. that is really slick because you know, like I said, for me, if I want to add a permission, that used to mean that I would have to edit individually maybe 150 different borrowers to add permissions. Hmm. The just the basic part of this of this uh, tool means that I could go in and I could say, okay, take this, this template and manually apply it to that whole list. But once they're mapped, anytime I change that template, it automatically updates all of the, uh, all of the people on that template. So there are a couple of pitfalls though. If I, um, there, if I were to add somebody new, this is where I've, I've come across some troubles. 
Um, if I go in and I add somebody new to that list, what I'm finding is that sometimes the permissions are added as soon as I add them to the list. And sometimes they are not added automatically. Hmm. Um, I, at first, um, you know, when I started doing this and, and when we were working with it the last time, the, what we were finding is that um, when we added somebody to the list, it wasn't giving them the permissions. Um, and then what I found out later is that if I, because we were testing this, I was creating a patron and I was adding to the list and taking them off and adding to the list and taking them off and things seemed to break whenever I did that. Um, and so then I reloaded everything and I added somebody to a list and then all of a sudden they had the permissions. And then when I, when I added somebody else, they didn't. So it, it just seems to be that if you're adding new people to the list, you want to run it manually to update everybody. Um, so that seems to be the first pitfall here. It seems like it's almost like uh, with the mapping, maybe it's, and, and this is just theory because of what yeah. you're observing, is that it's making a copy of the, the list and you know, keeping that updated rather than always referring to the list? I don't know. Um, because uh, I, I honestly don't know what's going on. Um, I'm really not sure. It probably has something to do about the order that the script that does this process is running in. There's probably something. Actually, yeah. Actually, I think I might know what's going on. And again, this is just theory, but because of my my particular testing, I'm thinking it only updates when you make a modification to the template. Yeah, so, and that's so if what you I add somebody to that list and there's been no modification, there's nothing to trigger, hey, go update these people in this list. That's what I'm thinking too. Um, but it but there have been other times when I've added somebody to the list and then they immediately have the permissions. Hmm. So I'm and and um so I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. It it seems to be a minor flaw, but that is what you know I've started to do is when I add somebody to the to the list, I go in and I give them, I give the template a permission and I save it, and then I go back and I take that permission away. And then the everybody on the list is updated. Do you have to do you have to make a change to the list in order for it to or I could run it manually? Okay, yeah. Once you run it manually, every time you make a change to the template, everything seems to work fine. So, but I'm going to show you the other thing, and we both talked about this, and we also talked to a couple of people that are already using this tool and how much they hated it, mm. <laughs> how much they hated this one part. So, um, you know, we have this uh, Lee Baker, Liam Baker is one of my fake patrons. And this is on the Koha US test server. So I'm gonna open their account over here. And when I go to set permissions, you see the permissions that they have on this account for like a split second and then they're gone. Yeah. Because um, it's telling you that this permission is controlled by the director. And so my first thought to this is, well, you know, it was there for a second and then it's gone. So it's probably some jQuery or some JavaScript in the, in the uh, template, in the plugin that's hiding all this. Um, and it was more complicated than that because the template, the, the plugin isn't hiding all of that. It's actually replacing uh, all of the, that entire table with this text. Hmm. And so that was the, um, this is the part of the, um, of the, uh, of what you saw in GitLab when you say, hey, this has two contributors. I actually wrote a patch for the plugin um, and Kyle pulled it into the, the master version of this um, that will actually show you, it will actually say this, this template, this patron is controlled by this template, but then it will show you a list of what permissions that uh, user has. 
and, and I have that disabled so you can't change them, right? Yeah, the, I've just disabled all the checkboxes so you can't change anything. So I'm actually going to go to, um, and I'm going to show you that on my system because it isn't fully integrated yet into the. Uh, it's not released. It's not released in the in the final version of the plugin. It needs to be that part of the plugin needs to be uh, to be updated <laughs> with the new with the new code. So let me go to patron list, and I've got one patron list here in my system that is all full of uh, test borrowers. And so if I go to one of these test borrowers, like good old Emily Frosty, who I've been who's been battered by this plugin for the last month now because uh, because I've been screwing around with it for that long. But if we go to here now, um, the soup this patron is controlled by the super librarian. And the patch that I wrote for Kyle's plugin, what it does is, you know, I, all of this stuff is here, but all the checkboxes are disabled. So you can no longer edit it, but you can at least see what uh, this borrower has as part of their permissions. Right. And if I go to the, uh, if I go to my template for this set of uh, permissions, and if I modify them, if I change them so that they're just an assistant, and save this, if I go back to this patron and reload the permission set, yes, that didn't work. How come this always stops working right when we're in the middle of a video? <laughs> what did I do wrong? Set permissions. Oh, I uh, I didn't save it, right? Well, it worked. You cleared all the permissions, and it cleared it on that that patron, as far as I could see. Unless I was looking at things wrong. I think I just forgot to click save. Yeah. I cleared it, and then I saved it, and then I forgot to. I don't know. Some somewhere or another, I screwed up, but it, it's working. Um, it seems to be working now. So, okay, let me let me point out a few things that I've noticed about this plugin that, um, and you can navigate around while I, I point these things out. Yeah. Um, can you go back to our demo site where it's showing that it's linked to the... Yes. Um, where it's controlled by... One of the, one of the things that that I noticed about this is you'll know you'll note in mapping that there are two components to mapping. There is the the template, and then there is the list. This only points out what the template. So yes, you can go you can go and modify that template, but you do not know what list is being involved. You have to actually go and decipher. The, the plugin mappings in order to determine what list is being used. Actually, if you go to the um, template um, after you've got it set up, it will say that this patron is a permission template for this list. Okay. So, so, so that you is have to go to the template to go find out what list it's, it is involved. So you, yeah, it would be nice if when you clicked on, uh, if this uh, message here where, where you go to set permissions, if in addition to saying director, it'd be nice if it said something here about which, which list is getting, is, is uh, which list that patron is a part of, right. it's creating that connection to the template. Right. That would be handy, yes. My second issue with this plugin, uh, deals with what happens if a patron is part of more than one list. Yeah, and I looked into that and I was able to decipher enough of the code that there is some safeguard in there that the patron will only be controlled by one of the templates, but I'm unable to decipher from looking at it. Um, you know, when you go to the code here, I, I would it would take me a good long while to find out where I saw that. It's somewhere in the... Uh, in actually, in somewhere in, in the Perl, um, I think there's a part where it says, 
um, that if the patron is on more than one list, it's only going to follow one set of permissions, but I'm unable to determine which set of permissions it's going to follow. And, you know, if that's not spelled out in the plugin, then that leaves it as a huge question mark. Yeah. For people using this plugin. So, yeah, that is something to to be careful about. Be sure yeah. that you're not you're not putting people in more than one uh, list. My my next one uh, that I have uh is and you've addressed this and you can show us how you've addressed this is what happens i mean because your templates are just like any other patron what happens if somebody goes in and deletes the uh the template now if if you are using a stat if you're just manually uh statically changing things nothing's going to happen everybody keeps their permissions but if you're mapped and you delete the template if i remember correctly everybody's permissions disappear it it seemed like it when we were working on it in that aborted video but i think the reason that um that we thought everybody's permissions were disappearing is because the permissions weren't being applied <laughs> so i'm not 100 percent sure about that it looks to me like when you delete the template um the the people on the list just retain those permissions um, that's what I seem that to find out. Yeah. But, you know, from my perspective, because I've got so many libraries, my plan is to have five, um, five sets of five templates and five main lists of who is, who gets permissions. Um, so what I've done is I actually created a specific borrower category for my templates. I actually created a new um, staff, a new borrower category called staff permissions templates. And then I wrote some jQuery that takes away the edit button and it takes away the delete button. So if, if anybody from my staff goes in there, um, uh, they cannot accidentally um, they could not accidentally delete one of these templates. So here's my super librarian template. And I don't have that edit button up here. And if I go to more, I no longer have that uh, delete borrower uh, is no longer on the dropdown. If somebody does find a way, like I think if you go to notices, then you've got the edit button. Uh, but what I've done is I've disabled the save button. So if somebody does figure out how to get into one of these accounts, they can't actually modify it. So that's what I've done in my case, because this is, you know, we're planning it by the end of 2023, hopefully by the, the summer of 2023, that we will have each staff member at each library will have a separate login account, which we don't have now. Um, and so I need to be pretty careful about how these are configured so that uh, somebody doesn't accidentally delete a template. Right. So that's what I'm going to do. And, and I will um, share the jQuery with you. I will share it on the, uh, on the wiki and send you a link so that we can get that into the video. That'd be great. Um, but that's one of the things that I've been concerned about too, is how do we make it so that... Uh, how do we make it so that people can't delete a template? Now, being unable to delete a list, that's a more complicated issue because that's also an issue. That was going to be my next comment is yeah. that the lists. <laughs> For um, right now, um, all of the lists I'm creating are lists that are private lists of borrowers that only I can see. Of course, the problem there is, you know, somebody here in Northeast Kansas, uh, I'm not sure if it was me, but I can hope. Um, somebody on Saturday in Northeast Kansas won a $92 million lottery jackpot. At lunchtime, I'm going to go check my tickets. Um, so if I win, this will be the last time you guys are ever going to see me. <laughs> but if I do win the lottery, what's going to happen to these lists, these patron lists that I am the only one that has access to? 
Um, so I can make these shared patron lists, which is not difficult to do. Um, if you own a list, you can go to patrons and patron lists. And like, here's my um, list of uh, test borrowers. If I go in and edit the list, I can make it a shared list. Making it a shared list means that any staff member at any library um, has access to add and delete members from that list. And I don't want that either. Um, so that's gonna be something that I need to figure out is how to make these lists um, in such a way that they can be shared among maybe Neckel staff, but not shared to the staff at the smaller libraries. Um, and, you know, of course you can go about it the same way, you know, if you've got a common yeah. a name or you know, element to your list, you could use jQuery and you could make those disappear from, or, you know, make them unclickable for, for un unless you're a super librarian or something of that nature, you know, you can, you can get creative in locking that out too, but it does add some complexity. Yeah. Plus, you know, the jQuery, even when you've blocked people from deleting or modifying the, uh, the templates, I mean, if you, you know, if you're savvy enough, you can bypass jQuery and still yeah. do that. So, yeah. And that would be, uh, you know, using a, a naming convention is actually the direction that I'll probably go with those lists uh, in such a way that other staff members can have the ability to add and delete borrowers from them. But, and those, um, and those naming conventions are helpful too, especially, you know, when you have 30 to 40 uh, lists and that tool is showing you every list, um, you can uh, just, you know, go to that group of, of yes. lists and, and find your list a little bit more easily it would be nice if there was some sort of filter uh at some point where the uh tool uh only looked at certain lists that had um some sort of setting or some sort of naming convention uh so that you didn't have to look through every list in order to pick it yeah i actually have 94 lists in our system and most of them are uh, most of them are shared lists, but, you know, that's something, that's something we, that, that is an issue with this too. There's, I mean, it's a great tool. Like we've said a couple of times, it's a great tool, but there are some things that, that, uh, that you got to be aware of if you want to use it. I'm trying to think if there are any others. Well, you know, one of the one of the things that that we also ran into with this plugin is if somebody is in a list, especially a map list, and they need special permissions, you have to remove them from that map list. You you can no longer manage them globally like you do. You have to manage them individually in order to give them special permissions. And that's a little bit challenging. It would be nice if there were some way to, you know. Yeah, I, I like how you've modified it for an upcoming version uh, to where you can actually see what they're a part of and you've disabled that list, uh, what permissions that they have, but it would be nice if it only disabled the permissions that are that are being controlled by that template and that you can add others to it if you needed to. That would be... Uh, It'd be complex, but it, it would it would be nice. Since I'm not too worried about that, I think that's an area for you to explore. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that is a concern I have because I do have a couple of people that fall outside of the normal set of permissions. Um, so there are, and well, one of the thing, one of the other things that I did is, you know, there are several different versions of the Koha report to show you who at your library has permission. And uh, what, one of the things that I did, um, what I wasn't sure if we would be able to work around that, uh, the inability to see what, what the permissions on an account are. But one of the things I did is I went ahead and I rewrote my uh, permissions report. 
Um, and it's, for me, it's report 3675. And if I run it, well, and actually I don't want to run it because no. it will show us the names of a lot of people. Um, but if I run it, it'll show um, a list of all the, all the people that have permission. And I can do it on a library by library basis, or I can do it for the whole of next search catalog. Um, but I, the, the thing I didn't like about the old report is that it was, you know, as wide as the list of permissions, because right. I had all the different stuff in a separate column. And what I did is I used some concatenation to make it so that, uh, that the username uh, and library, I think it's library username, and then all of the information about which permissions they have is concatenated into one field so that it's something that'll display on a single screen rather than rather than needing three screens wide to really get a good look at it. And I will share that into the Koha Wiki uh, and, and make sure that you have the link to that to put in the video too. Sounds great. You got two things to share now. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think if there's, I should have written this in such a way that I could show it off during the video. But I can't think of a good way to do that. So it's okay. All right. Well, George, thank you very much for showing us the uh, advanced mapping features of this plugin. And you know, like we said, there are some things to to watch out for. Uh, when yeah. You, this, you know, it, with great power comes great responsibility. But <laughs> yeah, and that and that's one thing I would say too is that I'm not worried about. I'm I'm usually not worried about a staff member that's going to go in and maliciously do something wrong. I am far more worried about staff that um, don't realize that the consequences of, you know, like, what's this patron called template? Do we really need them? I'll just delete it. You know, that's the kind of thing that I'm more worried about is somebody deleting something or modifying something without realizing the consequences of their yep. actions. Yep. That's that's the scariest part. Yeah. Because I've been on the other side of that where somebody said, oh, well, this this setting doesn't make sense. And then all of a sudden, nobody had a grace period for three weeks while we tried to figure out what was wrong. Fun. Yeah, that was that was an unpleasant experience at a previous job. Well, what, this setting doesn't make sense. I'll change it. <laughs> all right. Well, another great video. Thank you very much. And just a reminder to everybody, please uh, check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash Koha US, no dash. And uh, subscribe to our playlist or any of our videos. Uh, make sure that you like the videos that you do like and comment. Um, let us know, you know, what really helped, what you'd like to see, or if something doesn't apply anymore. So uh, feel free to comment. We'd love to get those comments. And with that said, oh, George, you were going to say something. I was just going to say, yeah, we love to hear. We love to see comments. Yep. All right. And until next time, see you. Bye, everybody. Bye.